Our next story begins with a startling question. What on earth are Nepali citizens doing on the blood-soaked battlefields of Ukraine? They are doing what adventurers and killers from across the globe are doing, fighting for whichever side offers more money. You see, the Ukraine war has become a wiper's nest of mercenaries. Both sides have outsourced killing to brands of globe-trotting mercenaries. A new report claims that many of these mercenaries are coming from Nepal. Just have a look at the headline on your screen. It says police in Nepal have detained over 10 people. Why is that? For allegedly recruiting Nepal citizens into the military. Let me take you through the findings of the report. Number one, the smugglers allegedly charged each man up to $9,000. Two, these people were then taken to Russia on tourist visas via the UAE. Number three, these men were then recruited into the Russian army, though it's not exactly clear how. Number four, in October this year, one such mercenary from Nepal was even captured by Ukrainian forces. Number five, at least six Nepalese citizens who served in the Russian military have already been killed in the war. Now, all of this begs the question, how many Nepalese citizens are actually fighting for Russia? Well, Nepal says it's unclear how many of them are serving as mercenaries, but their number is estimated to be at least in the hundreds. This is all based on claims, by the way. Nepal's ambassador to Russia has made his own claim. He says around 150 to 200 Nepali nationals could be fighting for Russia. And there are also reports from locals saying that scores of people are signing up every week. Let me just read out a quote from Nepal's ambassador to Moscow, Milan Raj Tuladhar. We are sending those who come to our contact back to Nepal, telling them about the high risks associated with joining the Russian military. We have been sending back at least one Nepali national a day. They were all brought to Russia to serve in the army. But the question is why? Why are these people leaving their country to fight as mercenaries abroad? What could the motivation be? Well, it's mostly money. You see, Nepal is one of the poorest nations in the world. According to the World Bank, about 40% of its population lives below the poverty line. So for most of these people, money is a big driving factor. Just have a look at this Telegram post. It was published by the Ukrainian media earlier this week. It claims to show a Nepalese man who was reportedly captured on the battlefield. In the video, he says that he joined the Russian army for money, as did many of his friends. Another driving factor could be a residency visa or a Russian citizenship. In fact, in May 2023, Russian President Vladimir Putin signed a decree simplifying the process of obtaining Russian citizenship, especially for foreign nationals who want to join its ranks in the war. Now, here's the thing. This is not the first time such a report has emerged. There have been similar reports several times in the past. Take the one on your screen right now. It's from June this year. The report claimed that Nepalese Gurkhas were joining the Wagner Group in lieu of Russian citizenship. It added that Russia was offering simplified citizenship to not just the mercenaries, but also their family members. And why just Russia? Even Ukraine is hiring foreign mercenaries. Have a look at the report on your screen. It says last year, scores of Japanese citizens were hired by the Georgian Legion, a military unit formed by mostly ethnic Georgians, and they have been fighting against the Russians in Donbass. Reports say since last year, this Legion has hired and is still hiring Japanese fighters. Some of them are civilians, some of them are former soldiers and some belong to Yakuza, the Japanese Mafia. The bottom line is this, hiring mercenaries is big business. There are multiple private armies that exist globally. But how do they survive? How do they thrive? Is this even legal? And where does international law stand on this? Well, the Geneva Convention criminalizes mercenaries, yet international bodies have done nothing to disband private armies. Why is that? Because the most powerful countries are playing this dangerous game. 
UN Security Council members are busy building private armies themselves. Think about it. We are now available in your country. Download the app now. Get all the updates on the move.